It is the tradition in all parts of the world, often in Roman Catholic observance, that on Good Friday, people follow the way of sorrows. On the day when we mourn the death of Christ, people find a church or a labyrinth or a road or a pathway where there are stations symbolizing what happened on that terrible day. Fourteen stations make up the Via Dolorosa, from the trial through the streets of Jerusalem, places people tried to help, and places where he fell beneath the weight of the cross, and at last the place of crucifixion, and then finally the place of burial. Today we share with you of virtual Stations of the Cross. The modern poet Malcolm Geet has written 14 poems to mark each of the stations, and he has kindly given us permission to use those poems today. During the reading, you'll see images that symbolize the way of Christ's journey and symbolize the way of the heart. When each reading is done, there will be a short time of silence for prayer and reflection. And there you will see images of the bronze statues at Gretna, Nebraska Retreat, created by artists from across the U.S. Let us pray. Almighty God, your dear Son did not ascend to joy until he first suffered pain, and did not enter into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find in this practice a true way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of sorrows and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. And yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before it shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet, it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. 
And therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. At love withheld, at strength misused, at children's innocence abused, and till we change the way we love, God weeps. God The very air that Pilate breathes, his voice with which he speaks in judgment, all his powers of perception and discrimination, choice, decision, all his years, his days, his hours, his conscious self, his very sense are given by this prisoner, freely given. The man who stands there making no defense is God. His hands are tied, his heart is open, and he bears Pilate's heart in his and feels the crushing weight of wasted life. He lifts it up in silent love. He lifts and heals. He gives himself again with all his gifts into our hands. Pilate turns away. A door swings open. This is Judgment Day. He gives himself again with all his gifts. And now we give him something in return. He gave the earth that bears, the air that lifts, water to cleanse and cool, 
fire to burn. And from these elements he forged the iron. From strands of life he wove the growing wood. He made the stones that paved the roads of Zion. He saw it all and saw that it is good. We took his iron to edge an axe's blade. We took the axe and laid it to the tree. We made a cross of all that he has made and laid it on the one who made us free. Now he receives again and lifts on high the gifts he gave and we have turned awry. He made the stones that paved the roads of Zion, and well he knows the path we make him tread. He met the devil as a roaring lion, and still refused to turn these stones to bread, choosing instead, as love will always choose, this darker path into the heart of pain. And now he falls upon the stones that bruise the flesh, that break and scrape the tender skin. He and the earth he made we're never closer. Divinity and dust come face to face. We flinch back from his via della rosa. He sets his face like flint and takes our place, staggers beneath the black weight of us all, and falls with us that he might break our fall. This darker path into the heart of pain was also hers, whose love enfolded him in flesh and wove him in her womb. Again, the sword is piercing. She who cradled him and gentled and protected her young son must stand and watch the cruelty that mars her maiden making, waves of pain that stun and sicken pass across his face and hers as their eyes meet. Now she enfolds the world he loves in prayer, the mothers of the disappeared who know her pain, all bodies bowed and curled in desperation on this road of tears, all the grief stricken in their last despair are folded in the mantle of her prayer. In desperation on this road of tears, bystanders and bypassers turn away. In others' pain, we face our own worst fears and turn our backs to keep those fears at bay. Unless we are compelled, as this man was, by force of arms or force of circumstance to face and feel and carry someone's cross. In love's full glare, and not his backward glance. So Simon, no disciple, still fulfilled the calling, take the cross and follow me. 
By accident, his life was stalled and stilled, becoming all he was compelled to be. Make me, like him, your pressed man and your priest, your altar Christus, burdened and released. Bystanders and bypassers turn away and wipe his image from their memory. She keeps her station. She is here to stay and stem the flow. She is the reliquary of his last look on her. The bloody sweat and salt tears of his love are soaking through the folds of her devotion and the wet folds of her handkerchief, like the dew of morning, like a softening rain of grace. Because she wiped the grime from off his skin and glimpsed the Godhead in his human face, whose hidden image we all bear within. Through all our veils and shrouds of daily pain, the face of God is shining once again. Through all our veils and shrouds of daily pain, through our bruised bruises and reopened scars. He falls and stumbles with us, hurt again, when we are hurt again. With us, he bears the cruel repetitions of our cruelty, the beatings of already beaten men, the second rounds of torture, the futility of all unheeded pleading, every scream in vain. And by this fall, he finds the fallen souls who passed a first but failed a second trial. The souls who thought their faith would hold them whole and found it only held them for a little while. Be with us when the road is twice as long as we can bear. By weakness, make us strong. He falls and stumbles with us, hurt again, but still he holds the road and looks in love on all of us who look on him, our pain as close to him as his. The women have compassion on him as he does in them. He asks them both to weep and not to weep. Women of Gaza and Jerusalem, Women of every nation where the deep wounds of memory divide the land and lives of all your children, where the minds of all our wars are sown, Afghanistan, Iraq, and the Côte d'Ivoire, he reads the signs and weeps with you, and you will stay until the day he wipes away your tears.
He weeps with you, and with you he will stay when all your staying power has run out. You can't go on. You go on anyway. He stumbles just beside you when the doubt that always haunts you cuts you down at last and takes away the hope that drove you on. This is the third fall, and it hurts the worst, this long descent through darkness to depression, from which there seems no rising and no will to rise, or breathe, or bear your own heartbeat. Twice you survived. This third will surely kill. And you could almost wish for that defeat, except that in the cold hell where you freeze, you find your God beside you on his knees. You can't go on, you go on anyway. He goes with you, his cradle to your grave. Now is the time to loosen, cast away the useless weight of everything but love, for he began his letting go before, before the worlds for which he dies were made, emptied himself, became one of the poor, to make you rich in him and unafraid. See as they strip the robe from off his back, they strip away your own defenses too, now you could lose it all and never lack. Now you can see what naked love can do. Let go these bonds beneath whose weight you bow. His stripping strips you both for action now. See as they strip the robe from off his back and spread his arms and nail them to the cross. The dark nails pierce him and the sky turns black and love is firmly fastened onto loss. But here a pure change happens. On this tree, loss becomes gain. Death opens into birth. Here wounding heals and fastening makes free. Earth breathes in heaven, heaven roots in earth. And here we see the length, the breadth, the height, where love and hatred meet and love stays true, where sin meets grace and darkness turns to light. We see what love can bear and be and do. And here our Savior calls us to his side. His love is free, his arms are open wide. If it be
The dark nails pierce him, and the sky turns black. We watch him as he labors to draw breath. He takes our breath away to give it back, return it to its birth through his slow death. We hear him struggle, breathing through the pain, who once breathed out his spirit on the deep who formed us when he mixed the dust with rain and drew us into consciousness from sleep. His spirit and his life he breathes in all, mantles his world in his one atmosphere. And now he comes to breathe beneath the pall of our pollutions draw our injured air to cleanse it and renew. His final breath breathes us and bears us through the gates of death. His spirit and his life he breathes in all. Now on this cross, his body breathes no more. Here at the center, everything is still, spent and emptied, open to the core. A quiet taking down, a prizing loose, a crossbeam lowered like a weighing scale, unmaking of each thing that had its use, a long withdrawing of each bloodied nail. This is ground zero, emptiness and space, with nothing left to say or think or do but look unflinching on the sacred face that cannot move or change or look at you. Yet in that prizing loose and letting be, he has unfastened you and set you free. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Holy God, you who are more than mother, more than father, let your blessing be on us as we pass through these holy days in which we remember the sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Set his example before us that we may follow him in willing obedience. Learn his gracious humility and be filled with his love and spirit of self-sacrifice, and to learn the lessons of a life pleasing to you and helpful to our neighbors. Through him who loved us and gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here, at the center, everything is still. Before the stir and movement of our grief, which bears its pain with rhythm, ritual, beautiful, useless gestures of relief. So they anoint the skin that cannot feel soothing his ruined flesh with tender care, kissing the wounds they know they cannot heal, with incense scenting only empty air. He blesses every love that weeps and grieves and makes our grief the pangs of a new birth. The love that's poured in silence at old graves, renewing flowers, tending the bare earth, is never lost. In him all love is found, and sown with him, a seed in the rich ground.
We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. And for to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. <laughs> 